So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Watch Market Update Show. You know guys, I'm making this video because I've been reached out by many subscribers asking me where do I take my watches to get service? And I gotta tell all of you out there, that's something that is very, very touchy. It's a very touchy subject because by me recommending you where you should take your watches to get service, basically, I'm gonna become responsible for your watches. You know, if they get fixed, if they get returned back, if you're satisfied, if they charge you too much, whatever it is. And it's a hard thing to get involved in, you know, the recommendation where you should take your watches. But I am gonna tell you, I am gonna tell you that, you know, you should not send your watch. If you live somewhere in Europe, you should not be sending your watch to get service in the United States. It's a big, big risk that you're taking that maybe your watch will never get fixed or maybe your watch will never be returned back to you. I'm gonna tell you a story of a gentleman that had a watch that lived in Spain. He had a beautiful Rolex Submariner 5513 with a beautiful underlying dial. Unbelievable, you know, gilt dial, unbelievable. Never was touched by anyone. It was not even touched by, you know, this, there's a gentleman by the name of Michael Young that he fixes dials. He puts them perfect, but they're not no more original, you know? They've been tampered with, you know? They've been touched, touched up. But this guy that I'm talking about, Michael Young, leaves the dials perfect, but they're not never original then no more. But this gentleman's dial was an original underlying gilt dial, beautiful. And he had this uh, watch that he wants service. You know, back in the day, back in the early 60s to so 64, they were using this underline and it was to describe, it was, you know, horizontal straight line to describe that, that this watch didn't have um, uh, rhodium or didn't have, um, that it has something, you know, that uh, people were not happy with it and the customers were complaining about it and uh, they just were not happy. So this was a way for Rolex to identify that that watch but the line didn't have rhodium or didn't have, I don't know, something, it has something, you know what it is? Another day I'll tell you the whole story. So they complained and this is why they made that underline. And it was made between, let's say 62 to 64. And not many of those dials were out there, you know? And this gentleman has one, a perfect one. So he took his watch, his beautiful watch, and he sent it out from Spain to the United States. And the service watchman, when he saw that dial, he 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 like he couldn't believe it that this gentleman sent him this dial. The dial of that watch, that underlying dial, gilt dial, is worth more than the than the whole watch, than the than the movement, the casing, the bracelet. That dial. The way it looked, the way it was, probably worth over a hundred thousand dollars. I'm talking about a watch that was never touched by no one. So when the serviceman got it, I mean, the, the person that sent it from Spain, he, you know, he knew this watch was beautiful, and he, and he sent it, but he, you know, he didn't have nothing in his mind thinking that that he was gonna get uh, he was gonna get ripped off from his uh, beautiful dial. So. The, the watch repairman, when he saw that, what he did was he took it out, put it in his pocket, and he had a $100,000 dial in his hand. And the gentleman from Spain, basically, you know, he got his watch back. He got repair service and all that. He got an overhaul, but, you know, he really didn't notice quickly. He just didn't notice it. But then after some time, he noticed that that beautiful underlying Gil Dow was missing, and that Gil Dow was worth over a hundred thousand dollars. Like I'm telling you, so you guys out there that have these vintage watches, you cannot be sending your watches around to get repair or service, you know, from where you live at. If you live in, in, in Spain, try to find a service repairman where you live at that you can see where he's at. This person lost that Dow, he lost a hundred thousand dollar Dow. And you guys should not be sending dials and watches from overseas or from wherever it is, Dubai, the Philippines, 
you know, Singapore or whatever, wherever, do not do that. You're most likely going to lose your watch. I'm not saying that every watch repair man is like that. I'm not. The people that I, that I deal with here in Miami, Florida, unbelievable. They're the best. The best. I know them for 30 years, 35 years, 25 years. The ones that I know, they're unbelievable. But there are a lot of a lot of watch repairmen out there. They're just there to scam you, you know, to let's say you have um, a GMT and you have a stack of uh, hands. The stack of hands, you know, they're, they're old. They're, they're very expensive. They take off those hands and put other hands on your watch. And basically you do notice or you don't notice, but you lost them. And the stack of hands are worth a lot of money. So I'm telling you guys out there, you gotta be very, very careful. Who are you trusting your watch with? Because most likely you're gonna lose parts of your watch. I know I know gentlemen that have taken their watch with a green dial, with a hawk, you know, you know, the H-U-L-K, the Hawk, hook, hawk, whatever you call it, right? The green dial. And they have been replaced by a, by a clone dial. And they have never noticed it until the day they're going to sell the watch and, and they open it up and they loop it and they look around and they know that the, the dial is a funny dial. It's, it's a funny dial. It's not the real thing. So you got to be very, very careful. Parts. I've seen people lose bracelets. You know, they said they're going to, you know, give it a, a polish. They're going to give it a, a detail. And they changed the bracelet from a Fugazi to, to and, and, and they keep the real one, they give you the Fugazi. And you'll never notice until the day you're going to do something with the watch. I seen bezels, you know, beautiful bezels, Pepsi bezels, you know, being swapped. I, again, I keep on saying this. I'm not saying that every watch repair man is like that. But there's a lot of them out there. They're, you know, they're, they're just, you know, hucksters and hoodwinks. And you got to be very, very careful. You got to find a local repair service man. The best thing for you guys to do with your watches, with Rolex watches in particular, is to try to find a service repair outlet from Rolex. You know, a service center from Rolex that you can take your watch there. It's your best bet. It's your safest bet you, you know you can go with. Instead of giving it to, you know, Juanito, you know, from the corner that does repairs, you know, don't do that. There's people out there that don't even know what they're doing with those watches. They know how to exchange, you know, quartz batteries, but they don't know what a mechanical watch is. And what they're gonna when they open it up, springs are flying all over the place and, and your watch is being dissembled and and basically, they give it back to you in a little box, a little Cracker Jack box here. You know, I don't know what happened. It went crazy, the the movement, you know? So you got to be careful, ladies and gentlemen, with your watches. Do not be giving your watches to anyone out there. You know, if you have a Patek, if you have an Adamas Piquet, you have a Rolex, try to give it to the, to the, um, to the authorized dealer. You know, let them do it for you. Because a lot of a lot of things can happen with your watch, you know, a lot of things. I'm being honest. Watches can be stolen. Some of these people, you know, they they get an expensive watch and and they're using a burn phone. And when you're calling up, they throw the phone away. You can never ever find them again. Your watch is gone. Okay, did you hear that right? You know, some of them have burn phones and. They get a beautiful $200,000 watch, and you're never going to see those people again. So stop giving your watches to these service repair watchmen that, you know, you don't even know who they are. And since you're so desperate because your watch has stopped working, you just send it out there. And basically, you're just giving a watch away for free. So I'm just telling you, be aware of these things. You have a lot of, you know, flim flammers out there. Again, I'm going to repeat this to you, watch repairmen. I'm not saying it's all of you, but you guys know there's a bunch of them that ruin your reputation. You know, the good ones. 
They take watches from people and say, I'll have it for you ready in 60 days because I got to ask for the part in Patek. I got to ask for the part for Automaz. I have to ask for the part for Rolex. And they just prolong the situation. And before you know it, your watch is just lost. And you lost everything. So I'm letting you guys know, be careful who you're giving your watches to. It's not an easy thing, but you have to find a good, honest, you know, watch repair man. I'm telling you this because there's a lot of people out there that are losing their watches that way too. You know, you, you have, you have a bunch of watch repair men that they're no good. They're flim flammers and they're trying to fleece you. And like I'm telling you, there's a lot of watch repairmen that know how to put batteries, but they don't know nothing about watches. And they take your watch, and as soon as as soon as it arrives, they take it and they start shopping it around. If it's a good watch, like I was telling you, the 5513 with the underlying dial, you know, that watch, that dial is worth a hundred thousand dollars, and he lost the dial. And it's nothing you're going to do because you're not going to be calling now a lawyer from Europe doing this, paying that, paying that. You're going to come down to the States. You're not. You're not going to do none of that. You're just going to lose your watch and that's it. Because basically, you know, as time went on, with, with the friend of mine that had that watch, you know, he probably bought that watch, I don't know, for $500, right? And now many years later, he has a dollar that's worth a hundred thousand dollars. Basically, you know, you know, he didn't lose a hundred thousand dollars. He could make a hundred, but he didn't lose it because he bought the watch for five hundred dollars back in the sixties. You know, so you're gonna be quiet, and you're gonna let that little scoundrel run out with your dial. So, ladies and gentlemen, be very careful with the person you're gonna trust with your watch to be serviced. It's a very touchy, touchy subject. Imagine me recommending that gentleman from Spain, here, take the watch in such place, and then the watch gets lost. Well, I mean, the dial gets lost. What is the person gonna do now from Spain? He's gonna be calling me, because I recommended that person. So that's one of the reasons why I do not recommend you know, watch repairman, watch serviceman. I don't, because it's a very, very touchy subject. You guys need to make some kind of a, a good friendship of a watch repairman that you can trust, that you can give your watches. If not, you have to do it with an authorized dealer. You know, that they, they do service to the watches. Paddock, Adamas, Rolex, Bacheron, Briguet, and so on. But don't give your watch to any Tom, Dick, and Harry. And most of all, don't be sending your watches through mail to a watch repair man. You're most likely never going to get your watch again. Most likely. Most likely. And again, I'm saying this. I'm not saying that every watch dealer repair, excuse me, every watch repair man is like that. I'm not. There's real good, honest repairmen out there. Real ones. They do a lot of good quality work. But it's a hard thing to be recommending where you should go with your watches. All right? I hope this helps you out and answers your questions about, you know, servicing your watches with any, any Joe out there that you see in the internet and in YouTube. You know, be careful. Be careful. There are people, there are people out there that are just waiting to see a beautiful dial. It's gonna be swapped. It's gonna be swapped. I've seen people send their Rolex Daytona yellow gold John Mayer with a green dial, you know, get detail and get their dial swapped with a with a with a with a clone, you know? I mean I can tell and you cannot tell. You know, the parts that that's coming from China today, it's unbelievable. You know, back back then, back in the in the late 80s, you know, you, you had a clone of a Rolex that was like a 45% accurate. And then back in the 
you know, mid nineties, you had it like to a 60%. And I'm going to jump to right now, right now, what they're doing in China as watches, dials, bracelets, bezels, all that good stuff, movements, movements, man, they're like to a 90. I'm going to, I'm going to be kind to say like a 90%, but it's even higher than that. They're doing perfections. So you guys got to be very, very careful when you give your watch to a repairman, you might get China parts in your watch. And then your watch becomes from original, it becomes a Frankenstein. All right, guys. So you got to be very, very careful. I'm telling you, there's there's every trick in the book out there. I'm there's a gentleman out there that I'm telling you that he's an expert. This guy to me is an artist and this guy's for real. If you want your 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 dials to get fixed and look better, you got to you got to look up Michael Young. He's the best in the world. He is the best. But remember this always after you give your dial to this gentleman Michael Young, it ain't no more original. It's been basically worked on and it's not original. Original was the the dial that that gentleman had from Spain that 5513 with an underlined submariner from the 60 to 62 to 64, you know, that's when they did those dials. And, and, and that dial got lost and he lost that dial because he gave it to the wrong repairman. So be careful out there, ladies and gentlemen, with your watches when you're looking to service your watch. Do not be sending watches over here, or over there. If you can't find a repairman where you live at in your hometown, do not send your watch. Keep it. Put it in the drawer. If it's not working, leave it there. Because you're going to give it away. Or parts are going to be missing from your watch. From vintage watches. Most of the watches they're getting today's service are vintage watches. You know, the modern watches, those things, they just keep on going. But vintage are the ones that, you know, break down a lot. But you have a lot of, you know, good parts of those watches that they need. So before I let you guys go again to all of you watch repairmen out there, I'm not saying all of you, but I'm telling you out of a hundred percent, you got a good 25% of dirty scoundrels out there. Right guys. So be careful with your watches. Anyway, guys, I hope that answers your question. Why I do not recommend people where they should take their watches to get service. All right. Well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like my video. And like I say every week, take care and brush your hair. The second Navy Blade Watch Monkey is dead! The second Navy Blade Watch Monkey is dead! <laughs>